Rebuilding a Tangy Model Steam Engine. This is part 15. Preparation and painting of the engine components. I've cut up a piece of 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper into some small squares which makes them much easier to handle. The green tub contains water because I'm using the sandpaper wet for this job. If I used it dry it would clog up very quickly. If you've been following the series you will know that I applied the etch primer before I applied the cellulose stopper and if you think about it that's quite logical. The acid in the etch primer bites into the metal makes the paint stick to the metal, then the cellulose filler sticks to the paint. Also, by applying the etching primer first, it really shows up the surface imperfections. I cut the piece of wet or dry sandpaper into the smaller parts, so that I didn't have a big sheet of sandpaper flapping about and accidentally sanding the corners of the casting. As you can see in this clip, when my hand moves out of the way, I've folded this small piece of sandpaper into an even smaller bit. Human fingers are very good for a multitude of different jobs, such as picking things up and feeling at the surface of pieces of metal to see whether they're smooth or not. Time now to look at what's going to be happening with the crosshead. I made this crosshead using a piece of round bar, and the crosshead is a really good fit in the crosshead guide. So this part of the crosshead guide needs to be unpainted. I need to get a sander in there to sand off the paint and smooth it all out. The Proxon motor tool on its own was too big for this job, so I fitted the flexible drive attachment. These are wonderful, and they'll fit any motor tool they'll fit in Dremels or other ones. The other end of the drive just fits in the chuck of whichever motor tool you're using. After using a drum sander to clean the brass, I then used a flapper wheel, which gives a much better finish. In this clip, I'm cleaning the bearing faces with it. Because it's more off balance than the drum sander, it makes a horrible noise, but it's actually cutting a lot less than a drum sander would. And once I've finished off the crosshead guide with the flapper wheel, it looks like this. I fitted some masking tape to this area because I don't want to have to remove the next coat of paint as well. In the outer part of the workshop, it's now time to give it a coat of ordinary grey primer. And in this part of the clip, I'm painting the outer crankshaft support column. In between the noise of the spray can, you can hear birds singing. That's because I'm near a very wide open door. By the time I'd applied a coat of primer to the crankshaft support column, the primer on the main engine casting was dry enough for a second coat. I want to make sure that I get full coverage of the primer. And the day after, not immediately like it looks on this video, I applied the top coat. This colour is Great Northern Railway Green and this particular paint is Phoenix Precision Paints Great Northern Railway Green which has been put into an aerosol by a company called Auto Paint Northern where I get a lot of my paint. And at this stage I would like to say once again the best etch primer I've ever found is the stuff that they sell. And I think I'll be using this etch primer from now on. This green paint that I'm spraying out of the aerosol is not cellulose, it's an enamel paint. And this is how it dries, it doesn't need polishing, it dries beautifully. Although I haven't showed it in the video, I held the part up in my hand to get a thorough coating on every part of the casting. And similarly, when I'm painting the main bearing support, I need to lift it up to spray it from underneath. And I just used a tool that was close to hand. This is a small pair of forceps that I keep near the vise in the outer part of the workshop. And this allows me to manipulate the position of this bearing support. So I get a bit less green paint on my hands. Here's a shot of the brand of cellulose stopper that I use. And this is the stuff that you've just seen me sanding off the main casting. This brass item is a steam chest and steam chest cover all in one machine casting. Or maybe it's been machined from the solid, but it's not been very well machined in certain areas, particularly the top where the threaded part is. So I'm going to fill this roughly machined part with cellulose stopper or cellulose putty. I stuck a paintbrush down the end of the tube and picked up some cellulose putty on the brush, but I didn't want to do anything with this because it was a bit too thick. I then dipped the paintbrush, complete with the cellulose stopper on the end of the paintbrush, into a small pot of cellulose thinners. Cellulose thinners, as we all know by now, is called lacquer thinner in the USA. By applying some liquid cellulose thinners to the brush, 
this makes it very easy to brush on the cellulose stopper. And as a bonus, it's applied very smoothly and it just settles back to an almost ready to paint finish. Once I've finished coating this part with the cellulose putty, I'm going to put it on one side, let it dry overnight, and tomorrow I will rub it down with the 400 grit sandpaper that you've seen me use on the main casting. This cellulose stopper is nothing like car body filler. You cannot apply it very thickly, otherwise it will not dry properly, and it will generally crack whilst it's drying. But this dried okay, I sanded it down, and the next day, here it is in the outer part of the workshop, being painted with X primer. And the birds are still singing because once again I'm in the outer part of the workshop next to a wide open door. Once I've painted this part with edge primer I'm going to leave it overnight, give it a bit of a rub down, then some grey primer and a final top coat. Now it's time to paint the flywheel. Usually when I paint steam engines if the castings are rough like the spokes on this flywheel I don't bother with any primer because the unevenness of the actual metal is a good key for the paint. I've done a lot of this and the paint doesn't seem to fall off, but if it does get chipped, it's very easy to touch in with a brush, because you don't have a layer of primer to contend with. This is going to be coat one of two coats. Sometimes you can get the paint to cover in the first coat, but not so in this case, it's going to need another coat. If you watch this painting sequence very carefully, you will notice that I'm applying quite a lot of paint. The term I would use for this style of painting is painting on the drip. I'm getting a good covering, but I'm not applying too much so that the paint runs. It just sort of flows into position. You will notice that occasionally I accidentally apply some paint to the outer rim. I remove this with a cloth, but I don't really need to do this. It's easy enough to remove the paint from the outer rim or the centre boss once it's dried, using some Scotch-Brite. That's about it from me. It's 7.30 in the morning, I've just finished this voiceover, and I think it's time to play some music. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.